tell us a little bit about your foundation and why it's so important to you. Definitely. You know, when I had the opportunity to be drafted, um, you know, I really wanted to give back to my community. Freeport, Roosevelt, Uniondale, Baldwin, Hempstead, Malvern, these were all the areas on Long Island where I grew up. And I felt very comfortable, uh, you know, I, I just said, you know what, I have to do something. Mm -hmm. So scholarships, education, that was something that I really uh, wanted to do. And that's, that's where I decided to give back. Now, where does that come from, though, in, in you? Was that instilled in you by your parents, grandparents, or what? Definitely. I would say my parents. Mm -hmm. My mother, she was in the school system for a number of years. And uh, knowing that, it really um, put something on my heart to say, hey, you know, I have to respond to that. I can't just allow that to n not matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents definitely pushed me to do this, and uh, that's why we have the Brook and Shore Ferguson Foundation. Now, you seem like a humble guy, but tell me what type of feelings you get when you see someone that moves on. Oh, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's something that's it's amazing. And, um, you know, when you see somebody that, that's able to get the, the I'm sorry. What um, okay. <laughs> when you, when you see somebody who, who's just able to get, just have a get the scholarship and, and utilize it for their success, mm -hmm. it's it's a, a feeling that just stays in you for mm -hmm. a while, and you just uh, you feel good about it. Yeah, I'm sure you're you're proud of them, but they also have to be proud of you and and your efforts out on the football field. You guys are a very different looking football team than the oh. one that left the field in Indianapolis. Talk about now being the hunted because last year maybe you snuck up on some people with the rookie quarterback, the rookie head coach, and et cetera. But now you guys are one of the favorites out there. Yeah, um, you know I think we've made a lot of moves in the off season, and uh, you know we're a team now that you know Rex has always said that you know we're we're going to be a team that nobody wants to play, mm -hmm. and I think we definitely embody that now. And we got to go out there and really do what we do best, and that's, that's win. Now, along the way, you've, you've made some additions, but there's also been some subtractions. One of the biggest ones, Alan Fanica, one of your good friends, like, as you told me, uh, one of your mentors. Definitely. How, how tough was that when you first got the news that he was going to be leaving? You know, Alan, again, he was such a mentor. And uh, to, to hear that, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't actually really know how to react. Mm -hmm. But um, I do understand that. Uh, as he mentored me along my way, it, now it's my time to kind of mentor others, and so it's almost a, the passing of the torch in a sense. Now you were very outspoken in the beginning, just with your feelings about that. Why did you feel it necessary to, to voice your your opinion on the situation? Yeah, you know, it, it, I always think of um, you know, sometimes you see in the movie and you see the guys drop down to their knee and they're like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And so. Uh, I mean, now that I've kind of had some time to, to think about it, but that was kind of like the reaction that mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard to see your teammates go just because you have such strong feelings. You know, you, you spend so much time with them. And they're good people. Mm -hmm. You know, got a great family. So uh, that's why, you know, you, I think you feel so strongly for them. And one of your fellow offensive linemen, then you talk about that bond, Nick Mangle was actually there yeah. when the news was delivered to Alan Fanick. How tough yeah. that must have been on yeah. him. I mean, you know, we're definitely, like I said, we definitely have friendships and, and we care about one another. And so that's something that, um, you know, you have to deal with. It's not something that you, you can just say, okay, and, and, and kind of move on. But you, you deal with losses. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the, the important thing is, you know, when things like that happen, now you have to stand up and kind of, uh, you know, fill shoes and, and, and kind of impart what they've imparted upon you and, mm -hmm. and kind of let it continue. And speaking of filling shoes, a rookie coming in and, and also Slauson who doesn't have any career starts. Those are the guys that are, are being mentioned as possibly filling issues. You as a rookie coming in, what adjustments are these guys really going to have to face getting up here and trying to get up to speed? Yeah, uh, you know, these, these guys, you know, Slauson's been on the team. He has uh, experience as well as, you know, Vladimir coming in. He's obviously a rookie. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough position. Uh, you know, that left guard is uh, very pivotal. And I think the chemistry between uh, the tackle and the, uh, the center is going to be important. Mm -hmm. But that, that's something that all can be developed. That's why we have training camp and OTAs and so forth. So it's, it's, it's something that we can definitely do. We do it every year. Every year it's almost like uh, you, you refer back to your college days mm -hmm. where uh, the senior leaves and now you know your new freshman coming in. Right. So it's, it's a transition that I think we're, we're ready to take. Is it something as simple as getting out on the field together or a study room? Going out to dinner, of course, with the rookie treating, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's not a simple uh, it's not a simple thing, but mm -hmm. it, it's it's something that when you do do it, the diligence, just like you spoke about, going out to eat, uh, building the bond there, uh, study room, practicing, all those things help in kind of developing what we have, mm -hmm. and that's a great offensive line. Talk about 
you guys as an offensive line, you're going to have to provide some holes uh, for uh, LaDainian Tomlinson. Talk about what he means to this team. You talk about his work ethic yeah. and already, you know, exhibiting that in front of you guys. LC, I, even in the short time that I've had a chance to know him, I know him to be a, a very hard worker. And uh, that's impressive, you know, a guy who's been in the league. And, and so, so eventually he doesn't have to do that, but he still, you know, pushes his body. And uh, for younger guys, I, I, it's inspiring because whenever you see a person that has attained so much success, still work, the hardest worker, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, you know, I have to step up my game. I have to do things so that I can elevate my game as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's going to be a great, great, um, great piece for, to our puzzle. Now, you lost Thomas Jones, but that means Sean Green gets more carries. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. LT is in here now. Um, talk about the pride you guys have in, in, in providing holes and, and stability for Mark Sanchez as well. Yeah, I mean, we definitely made a lot of different uh, changes, a lot of new pieces. Uh, but uh, like I said, the teamwork really comes through uh, practicing and doing those things. And, and like I said, uh, Sanchez has done an excellent job. I think he'll continue to do a great job. He has natural leadership abilities. And it's just a matter of just playing the game more. And I think we'll all gel together well. Now, I know as fans uh, and media members, uh, seeing all these moves that have been made, you sit back and go, wow, this team is. What about you personally? As you sit back and watch the shape of your team, mm -hmm. uh, actually, your team become remolded. Yeah. A, 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 a teammate used to tell me, or told me uh, a couple years ago, that every year your team changes. You know. Um, and then when I looked at the, I think the 2006 uh, photo, the team photo, and I looked at everybody on that team, and I, I compared it to what we have now, there's not a lot, there's not a lot right. of guys left, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, that, then those words, every year the words get uh, a little bit stronger, mm -hmm. and they, they really hit home. So I recognize that it's, it's just a matter of really uh, training and uh, understanding teamwork mm -hmm. and, and the new people that are on board. We have to gel all together to have success, mm -hmm. and that's the team we represent. Of course, the fans of the Jets uh, think that you guys are going to automatically be back in that AFC Championship <laughs> game, if not the Super Bowl. But just talk about the, the tough journey. I mean, there was a lot of ups and downs last season, and you may face those sort of things getting out of the blocks this season as well. Definitely. Um, it's, it's not easy to, 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 to reach those mountaintops, but it's something that I think we have the ability to do again. It's something that I think we will strive to do, and uh, I, there's no reason why we shouldn't do it. You know, but I, I definitely think it's not going to be an easy journey. Um, and like I said, we have to build chemistry, and, and there's there's certain things that we need to do as a as a team to to arise to that. But it's something that we can do. It's mm -hmm. something we will accomplish. Now we're seeing less of Rex Ryan these days. Weight wise, <laughs> but I don't anticipate hearing any less from him. What is that like plan for a guy who is, is so? Uh, Macho, so uh -huh. outspoken in his feelings for what his team can do. You know, he's a very passionate coach, and I think it definitely um, uh, it, it, it kind of spreads into us because we adopt his passion. We, or it, it kind of charges us, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of why we've had so much success last year, just because of the charge that it gave us. Mm -hmm. well, Talk about this this long journey. Now we started at the draft. Now we're, we're going to continue and continue. Do you have to keep yourself from thinking ahead? to where you guys ended up last year yeah. and just take it one game? Is it, is it like that? It has to be a one game at a time approach. Um, I, I think you have your long term goal, but your short term goal definitely has to be fighting this next opponent because those are the most important opponents at that particular time. Mm -hmm. You can't worry about the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl until you've beaten week three or week four. Mm -hmm. You know, these it's, it's about playing in that moment mm -hmm. and I think that's something we do well understanding the the mission that, or the task that we have ahead of us and, and tackling that now you guys are planning a, a new stadium it's no longer giant stadium yeah. so you know you guys are truly like co-owners of it now uh, talk about moving into the new building and uh, what uh, you, you're expecting crowd wise I mean the, it's, it's new and it's great uh, as far as uh, what the amenities have for you guys. You know, we expect the fans to definitely be a part of it even more so just because they're closer to the field, mm -hmm. they have more access to the players, um, and I think it's going to really help us. That 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 12th man out there is going to really uh, be our, our biggest advantage uh, in this new stadium. And it's, 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 it's a beautiful stadium. Had an opportunity to see it not too long ago. And uh, I think it's going to be ripe for a nice uh, uh, championship. <laughs> Are we going to see the Jets and the Giants both have <laughs> Super Bowl type years in the first year of the, of the new building? Like I said, that's always our goal right. is to get to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something we'll always strive to do.